For this first tutorial, we're going to animate a bouncing ball. Now this is something simple enough that anyone, regardless of prior experience with animation, can do. So let's get started. Press the menu button on either one of your controllers, that's the button above the touchpad. And with your other controller, hover over on the touchpad, hover over the crosshairs, and press in. This will activate your UI selection tool. By pointing at the UI, you'll now see a red dot, may change in the future, and to interact, simply pull the trigger. To create a ball, go to items, and come down to tennis ball. You'll now see a tennis ball appear in the center of the scene. Press the menu button again to hide that menu. On the touchpad again, look for the hand icon and click in. This now activates the grab tool. This blue zone around the tool is your grab zone. By intersecting with the red zone, grab point of an object, and pulling the trigger and holding, you can now move the object. You might see that the object is visible in that viewfinder. That viewfinder is attached to that camera. Its feed will be projected on there. If we show the camera the ball, we can see the uh, ball nice and close on the viewfinder. You might have noticed that the red zone, the UI, and the controllers themselves, even the menu, aren't rendered by that camera. That camera is the camera we use when we render out the final footage, so it wouldn't make sense to have these red circles and UI elements. It will only render out the important stuff, which is the, the object. The viewfinder itself also doesn't get rendered. If we grab this, we can't see it no matter how we hold it. So let's get started with the animation. First thing we want to do is we want to create a keyframe. Now keyframe stores the position and the rotation of this object. It stores it of all points in the object that have these red circles. In this case, with the ball, it only has one. Open your menu again, go to the UI tool, and select timelines. Now this might look overwhelming at first, but don't worry, it's actually much simpler than it looks. First thing we'll see is no timeline selected. We can't do anything with these until we have an object selected, so let's do that now. Simply click on the icon underneath the object's name, and it'll turn green. We will now see that object's name in this little box here. If we click on another object, it will turn green instead and we'll see its name up here. Go back to the tennis ball, and we'll add a keyframe by pressing this plus button. When you click on the keyframe, it will return to its position and rotation. Now, you might not have noticed it, so let's move it out of the way. If we come and click on it again, it moves back to its position. For the next keyframe, let's grab the ball and put it on the ground and we'll hit the plus button again. Now, if we click on zero, it'll return to its position there. If we click on keyframe one, however, there it'll be at the new position. We can use these arrows to navigate between keyframes, and we can use this slider to scrub through the timeline. For the bouncing ball, we want it to bounce up after it's fallen. There are a couple ways to go about this. First and probably the easiest way would be to just grab it and place it there and create a keyframe. If we now go to keyframe zero and press the play button, we'll see it looks like it bounces. So that would be the first way to go about doing that. The second way takes advantage of this timeline scrubber. I'll demonstrate by deleting this keyframe by selecting it and pressing the X button and scrubbing through the timeline to about here. Now, if I hit the plus button, a new keyframe will be created at that position and rotation. If I go back to keyframe zero and hit play, it now bounces to the correct height. If the ball were bouncing a crossover like that, this method wouldn't work, but because it's going straight up and down, we can use the, we can use the timeline to our advantage.
Using that same method, we can also click on keyframe one to get the ground position and add a keyframe. We can then repeat the process until the ball has finished bouncing. Hit restart to return to the first keyframe and then hit play. And we have mostly a bouncing ball. And you might notice that it's a little rigid, so let's take care of that now. If we were to come back to keyframe zero and hit play, we'd see that it falls at full speed immediately. When an object really falls, it hangs for a bit and then gradually builds up speed. To accomplish this, let's select keyframe zero, choose ease out, and we'll set a value of say one. Now if we hit play, it hangs for a bit and looks almost as if gravity is taking control. After it bounces up though, it seems to bounce off mid-air. To solve that, let's go to keyframe two. We want it to come up and slow down as it reaches the apex, then slowly speed up again as it falls down. To do so, we'll ease in by 0.5, and ease out by 0.5. These values you can experiment with to find the best ones for you. Hit play again, bounces, slows, and bounces. Looking good. So I'm gonna go and repeat that for all the airborne keyframes. Now that that's done, let's hit the play button again. looking much more like a bouncing ball now. Now you'll notice that as it gets lower, it's still taking the same amount of time in between each bounce. We can solve that by going roughly halfway and changing the length. 0.7 is probably good here. We'll do the same for here. This might be 0.5. 0.5. And this might be 0.3. The final keyframe doesn't play through since it's at the end, so we don't need to set its length. Hit restart and hit play. You can see the ball bounce and start to bounce quicker until it bounces no more. And there's your first animation. To save it, Come down to settings and hit save. Now you can load it up and play it. That's all for this tutorial. For the next one, we're going to cover some more uh, intermediate concepts such as object pinning, character animation, as well as a few other tips and tricks. Hope to see you there.